Views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the program host and do not necessarily reflect or represent the views and opinions held by TCN TV Network Incorporated. Due to the social nature of this broadcasting channel, videos may contain content copyrighted by another entity or person. The TCN TV Network claims no rights to the said content. TCN TV Network cannot be held accountable for the copyrighted content. TCN TV Network is a messenger and sharer of information and strives to verify but cannot warrant the accuracy of copyrights or completeness of the information on this program. Our brain is hardwired to trust what's familiar and be suspicious of what's unfamiliar. It's a basic survival instinct that's helped keep us safe for thousands of years. We unconsciously sort things into familiar versus unfamiliar, same versus different, them versus us. Here's a test. How do you feel about people who own a handgun? Don't attend church. Vote for the other candidate. Are on welfare. Don't eat meat. Have tattoos. Don't believe in marriage. Drive an electric car. Didn't go to college. Don't speak English. Curse. Are over six. Are disabled. Drive the speed limit. Love cats. Love dogs. Can you feel your brain sorting people into groups? Was there a little them versus us happening? It can happen unconsciously. Greetings. Upon greetings. Mm. So, first thing before we go any further, <laughs> I want everyone to take a look at my shirt. Okay? <laughs> yeah. right, everyone, everyone to take a look at my shirt, and if you guys think that my shirt is brown, I'd like you to put brown in the comments. I know this is very petty. It is. But I don't care. And if you guys uh -huh. see the color rust, mm -hmm. rust, put that in the comments. No, everybody, everybody's going to type in rust. Because that's what it is. What, what is rust a combination of? Red and brown, but it's Thank not you. just brown. You okay. are saying just brown. Part Welcome, so guys, to here to help you. I see what I got part here. marks. Biases. <laughs> I see what I got part marks on my face. Biases. Phone, right? That's what our show's on today, yes, isn't it, it? Yes, it is. So we've been doing some media literacy. So first of all, sorry, guys, about the weather outside. Like, It came early, which is unexpected. I don't know what to say about it. If you live in, in, the, in Canada or if you live anywhere in the north, that means anywhere in the North Americas minus Mexico. <laughs> Above the equator. Above the equator, it is cool, there. and it we got snow and a whole bag of snow. Yeah, man. So, sorry guys, welcome to here to help you today. We're gonna we wasted like a few minutes talking about rust and brown, but it's okay. It was very important. I had to get out of the way, but it kind of goes <laughs> into what we're going to say because we're talking about biases today, guys. There's so much information. I want to get through it as quickly as possible for you. Go for it. Because I really think that one thing that we're missing um, in in our literacy life for a lot of us, is understanding media literacy, which is a whole different language. And if you don't know the language, you will fall behind or get bamboozled or get conned. Right? So one thing to understand is that, of course, as humans, at least part of the time, we want reality to be different than it actually is. And most humans want to convince other humans that their version of reality is right. You for example, word, you, you for word example again. rust. You hear the word again? Brown. Con. <laughs> Convinced? Do you, do you hear the word? <laughs> Rest in the deal, not con business. So, you see me? Bias. Mm. Bias is the difference between.
between information people can access and the information people accept and share with others. Mm. Bias is a form of preference, and preference is deeply rooted in feelings rather than facts. So, facts. Y Rust is brown and red put together. Facts. But feelings. No feeling behind it. It's a fact. <laughs> but this you is had not a feeling. But you had some feelings in there. Anyhow, our biases <laughs> shape our feelings about facts that we accept. Mm -hmm. So. A bias can also be a tendency to approach situations and choices in a certain manner, often in a way that is unfair or unreasonable. So think about bias as almost like a bad habit, mm. okay? And bad habits are very hard to break. Very. Okay? And they're also very hard to recognize and control. So this is why biases can be a big, big problem for many of us. Okay. Okay. So where do we find our biases, Dave? Do you know? Can you name up some places that we find biases? As in specifics or just general? General. Books, literature. Yes. yes. Right? Especially in the history books, which we'll probably touch on a little bit later. Sure. Right? Where else? Uh, commercials, news. News, that's right. right? Magazines. That's right. Right? Sometimes on her opinion piece of the show, the editorial piece. <laughs> Side end. So over time, people started to use the word media, Dave refer not only to sources, books, and newspapers, but also to the people behind them. Hmm. They're considered... Isn't that a cool picture? Very. Just bun up. Bun up. All the bad news. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Media bias now has come to mean a widespread unfairness across all sources of media. Now, I want to... I want to kind of like show you guys some of the, the, the biases. So there's actually biases in even something as simple as weather. Yes. People will try to sway you with visual mm -hmm. so that you can believe a certain thing. And there's some idiot people who don't know how to do this properly. Selena, let's look at the very first clip and then we'll talk about it. But first, the severe flooding here in the Northeast as more rain continues to fall today. NBC hey. sees Michelle Kaczynski, I guess she's in the canoe, is in Wayne, New Jersey this morning. Hey Michelle, good morning to you. Good morning. Well, obviously we're getting a nice break from the rain, but not the flooding. This is essentially now a part of the Passaic River in this neighborhood. It rushed in yesterday through the streets. And it's really tough to control a canoe or a boat when you're out in it. It's much deeper oh, back there. because. Wow. Wow. Oh, boy. Wow. You know, it kind of reminds me, <laughs> there was um, an interview with a man in Jamaica a couple of years back, and it and cannot cross it, and it was huge, where you say saying only a fisherman or a fisherwoman can cross the river, right, because they have torrential downpour, right? And that's what this kind of reminds me of right now, I guess, so like, of course, the, the, the description, right, only to see, of course, the fisherman and the fisherwoman. the girl paddling hard, bro? <laughs> This girl's pet like she was going somewhere. But I have, you know what I don't understand is people are so stupid. Why didn't she just like block off that area so people couldn't walk there during the middle of her shot? <laughs> is she a fool? But I guess she's not the only idiot one because I have not one, <laughs> but two clips. Pull the next one, Selena. Well, Joe and Sandra, this is the only way Eric and his friends can get across the street from his home because as you can see, Church Street is a bit overwhelmed this evening. Every time it rains hard, it floods hard. <laughs> Cannot cross it. <laughs> we laugh, but I want you to understand that as simple as that is, because we're all dying in the studio today, but very simple things. And we, a lot of us, if we <laughs> see that guy, would think that these people are stranded. <laughs> On the river raft. On the river raft. <laughs> and she brought out eight people for this strippiness. But they do this stuff all the time in media, guys. This is why media literacy is you have to ask questions, which is why we did this. Last week we did it on disinformation and misinformation. Mm -hmm. And this week we're talking about biases because we all have them. That's right. We can't avoid them. Mm -hmm. But what we need to do is to understand our own biases and understand how they affect how we look at the world, how we perceive the world. How we gather information, the type of information we gather, who we listen to, right? Absolutely. There's some people out there who only know certain colors on the color wheel, mm -hmm. so they think that my shirt is brown. Yeah. 
and there's some people out there who, who, who the know how to we're color. creative minds <laughs> and we understand that there's 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 offsets to you, colors you hear the bias language now okay offsets not bias <laughs> and they know that this is <laughs> is that are you anchored when right now no too quick. <laughs> when we come back guys we're gonna actually dig into the history of news and how these bias has actually even started mm. and then we're going to talk kind of what dave was talking about we're going to talk about the types of biases that we have we'll see you soon on here to help you world famous spiritual astrologer and psychic pandit sai is born to serve people he's an expert on palmistry and horoscope he can handle all problems and give vedic solutions for business job love marriage husband and wife problems children personal and many others including depression he also performs pujas to clear all sorts of obstacles Call Pandit Sai and see changes in your life now. 647-766-1419 Located at 2895 Derry Road, East Mississauga, Airport Road and Derry. At Benjamin Law, we understand the real cost of personal injuries. As the victim of an accident, you may be the one who's physically hurt, but your main concern is that your family are the ones who will pay the price. Benjamin Law will be there for you, helping, supporting, and working tirelessly to resolve your personal injury case. Call 1-855-899-4878 or visit BenjaminLaw.ca and let our family of lawyers help your family. Hey. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. To here to help you. Oh, boy. Wow. You know, how are you, Dave? I'm biased. <laughs> Apparently. So today we are we are continuing our media literacy, I guess, series. Mm -mm. And today we're talking about biases, no, and we're explaining, Don't. and we're explaining the importance of understanding media literacy. And if you don't understand what can happen, if you were just joining us, go back and check out the last segment because we showed how easy it is to bamboozle people if you're not paying attention. Okay, and how mm. even in the weather, the weather they try to bamboozle. Us sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so this segment we're going to actually take a look, Dave, at some of the history of media and, and the phrases that have gone, at that, the phases, sorry, that it has gone through. Okay. And it's important to understand because it has shaped the way that we have to get all this information that we're getting in all the time, all the time, all the time. So the English word bias actually comes from the French word bias. Bias? Bias? I messed that up. Very. I should know better because I know a little. And it means angle or slanted line. That's what the word means. Just the word itself means how slanted. Okay. That's what it means. Really? Yes. Oh, interesting. So if you look at bias, you can think of about it like looking at water. So when it changes the angle of something that it passes through, um, anytime you put water in a glass, let's look at, take a look at that. You see how when you put that thing in the glass instantly, the thing looks like it's angled? That's what bias is. Ah. That's how. That's exactly what binds are. Binds are. biases are. So yes. our brains, yes, yes, mm -hmm. our brains work to filter out the data that would make us feel negative emotions, and we usually tend to go to things that obviously make us feel positive emotions. So, like the plant is actually receiving life from the water. No, we're past the water. Now. Oh, we're past the water. We're past the plant the water. But I was taking a positive experience from that. Okay, so. The power of media was actually first seen in 1733 when John Peter Zenger, who was actually a newspaper owner, okay. became critical of a New York colonial governor, William Cosby. So Cosby arrested Zenger and charged him with libel, or the printing of a false statement that harms a person's reputation. So until this point, governments could use libel charges to harass, run out of business, or actually imprison anyone who was critical about them. So Zenger's lawyers argued that Zenger had printed in the, but, the, but he had actually printed in the paper was true mm -hmm. and not libel. And Zenger, Zenger was then released. So this was the actual genesis of the First Amendment, which protects freedom of speech. Interesting. Right? Very interesting. So let's speed this forward a little bit, and let's look at the late 80s when the first big three came out. Do you remember the big three, Dave? What are the big three? What were the first big three that came out? Big three what? Stations. Oh, TV stations. Media outlets. Oh, are you talking like NBC? Yep. Uh, ABC? That's right. One more. I'm going to say CNN. CNN. 
CBS. No, CBS. CBS. That's right, that Columbia. Didn't come out yet. That's right, Columbia. CBS. Uh-huh. And that they actually accounted for 80% of television viewership at that time. Yeah, that makes sense. So in the 90s, the new media landscape changed a little bit, and the cable TV and 24 hour cycle news started to come up. This is when we were, now is when we started to get pummeled with all this different type of news all the time, all the time, all the time. Okay. So now, of course, we have children's channels, history channel, sports channel, cooking channel, craft channel. There's a channel. The color for, channel. Huh? The colors channel. The one that all the, all the palettes, as you like to say. Anyways, and this is when things. Are you over this? This is. You want to talk about this some more? Why not? Okay. Thank you. So the thing with all of these channels, you have to remember again, humans were biased. Okay. So everything that is being pushed on us. Mm-hmm. is from someone else's thoughts, someone else's experience. Mm-hmm. And we either accept it or we don't. Most of us just accept. And that's the problem. That's when it becomes really, really dangerous. You know, historically, <coughs> historically, I can see where a lot of people have benefited from this. Absolutely. Right? Of course. This is why it's dangerous. Right. Especially, you know, when I said the biases lean towards us as a people. Oh, boy. This is why I brought this up because... We suffer from this. We are the most media right. illiterate people in the world. Well, it's not even just so much media illiterate. It's just so much in regards to like who's been getting away with it, right? And how much have we soaked into it? Yeah, we kind of got. We've been bamboozled quite a bit. Yeah. Right. That's just what it is. Right. The white, the the doll experiment. Oh. Yeah. Right. The doll experiment is That's is one. One example. Right. Yep. 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 Right. So I mean, you know, like it's it's beautiful in regards to how we're able to go ahead now and um point this out to our people. Yeah. Because now. What we need to do right now, of course, is to make sure that our people are equipped with the know-how. This is the media literacy. This there you go. This, Excellent. Right? So you brought up CNN and Fox News. So Fox mm. had now entered the mix. Okay. And they're reporting, obviously, they're taking greater risks. They're going to Iraq, mm. Iran, during all that time. And they have videographers and photographers. Now movie people are starting to get involved. So now they're starting to do things like what we just saw. Because <laughs> they're, tra- they're trying Pop. to... The props? <laughs> the props. We're starting to make props now. This is now when propping started, okay? Okay. So more aggressive reporting started happening. Stories were actually getting pumped out a lot more regularly. Mm. So, again, dangerous because we're getting a lot more. We're getting an influx of information. Yeah. So this also increased pressure to evolve with viewers' taste and interest. Okay. Which is where we're at now. So, what do people like to see? As much as we love to think about shows that have integrity, they're not interesting. This is why people sometimes don't watch us. Because <laughs> you want me to think? No. It's so much easier to see disaster. Right. And tragedy. Yeah. And drama. And reality TV. And provocative opinion. So this is the type of thing that they've pushed out of that. Uh, because this is what we've been conditioned to enjoy. Mm-hmm. So they just keep pumping it and pumping it. Okay? Mm. So can you give us some examples? Bias. You say we're going to go into history. So we can do a little bit about that. Right now. What's some of the bias things that have been pushed out to us that many of us just believe and don't really think about? Well, um, Arnold Toynbee comes to mind. Who was um, uh, somewhat? I'm going to go ahead and put him out as a historian at some point. Um, however, though, he wrote specifically that when we classify mankind by color the only one of the primary races which have not made a creative contribution right, to any one of our 21st civilization is the black race. He actually said that? Yeah. This what is actually printed. You can actually find this in literature. Where? Where? Look up Arnold Toynbee. P-O-Y-N-B-E-E. Well, okay. It's even gone to science. Because didn't they say that because our brains were like, they said that our brains were smaller so that <laughs> we weren't as smart? And yeah. we believe that. Uh, we did. For the longest time. Too. Yeah. So this is, again, biases that you're, sh- you're showing right now because people are biased toward their own race. And that's where it's happening a lot now. This is what they're pushing out mm-hmm. a lot now is this whole race. There's a race agenda <clears throat> and pushing out race a lot. So mm. to talk about bias. And then you have to be so mindful, guys. Yeah. This is why it's very important to understand media literacy. Of course. And to understand how you feel about things and what you're so when we come back, we're actually going to go through how to fight this type of bias. We're going to go through the different types of biases. 
And hopefully that will help clarify, and you'll be able to maybe identify some of these things when you're doing your search. So we'll see you soon on Create a Healthy Life. At Benjamin Law, we understand the real cost of personal injuries. As the victim of an accident, you may be the one who's physically hurt, but your main concern is that your family are the ones who will pay the price. Benjamin Law will be there for you, helping, supporting, and working tirelessly to resolve your personal injury case. Call 1-855-899-4878 or visit benjaminlaw.ca and let our family of lawyers help your family. We're back. You know where you are? <laughs> I do. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I'm just in depth. I'm just focused because I have to get things ready for our next segment. So if you're just joining us, first of all, welcome to Here to Help You. Mm -hmm. And today we are doing uh, the second part of our series, and it's on media literacy and the fact that uh, a lot of us are walking around here media illiterate. And I want to help with that. We want to help with that. So let's go into the things we need to do to fight against bias and hopefully help people start to identify their own biases. Let's Ready? do it. All right. So first thing you have to realize is that fighting bias is your responsibility because they're not going to try to not sway you. <laughs> okay? They want you to be as biased as they are, or at least to believe they're biased. So you've got to fight that. That's mm -hmm. your responsibility. And here are some steps that need to be identified to do this. So first thing you've got to be able to do is recognize bias in the media. Then you've got to be able to contextualize the information and the opinion. And then you have to neutralize this bias for this little simple math. Add what's missing and subtract what shouldn't be there. We're going to break everything down. Don't worry. We're going to go through all of these so you guys have a better understanding. Yeah, the very do. first thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to start recognizing the biases in media and how they affect us. Let's go through this. The very first type of bias is called anchoring bias. So an anchor is designed to hold on to the first thing it catches. And this is exactly how our minds work. We often make judgments based on the first piece of information we receive, ignore or dismissing the information. Mm -hmm. All right? So be mindful of this when you're receiving the information. The first news report on any event is usually not the right one. And that's the one that most of us take. And if you notice, when things first come out, it's always, you know, it's happened, we're here, we got it. And they, have, they make all these claims, and then they spend the next seven days retracting and changing. <laughs> and oh, it wasn't, no, that's not. Well, he was, we found out. Don't take the first thing you get. Don't anchor. Wait. When you hear a story, if you can do it, just Make sense? Makes sense. Okay. Next, attribution bias. So to attribute means to assume a reason for something. This type of bias happens when we are unfair or unreasonable in assuming the reason for the thing. You like that little cartoon, eh? I do. Everybody yes. has their own bias. Uh-huh, okay? uh-huh. So, if a media figure gives a reason for anything at all, test it. Does the reason seem logical? These are some questions you can ask. Okay. Is there a connection between the effect or event and the cause the person gave? Okay. All right. Is there evidence to support the reason? Hmm. If your answers to these questions are no, then the reporter might just have an answer. Okay. You have to do a lot of questions. It's this is why people know why I do this. Yeah, because it's easy. Like, oh, it's easy because Google said it. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. First, our Wikipedia said it. <laughs> yeah, and Wikipedia is always right. 
Wikipedia is way biased. Very biased. That You can go on there and make changes, can't you? Yeah. Open source. All right. Confirmation bias. Mm-mm. Good. <laughs> so everybody wants to be right. And because of this, we often look for information that proves us right. I do this one. I, I, I'm going to listen. It starts with me as an individual. If you've been taken, <laughs> it starts with me. So this is my issue. All right. So I will sometimes go with things that align with my beliefs. Yeah, it, it mostly That's, a lot of people do. A lot of people do this one. Because mm-hmm. it's like, you see, I told you. Like, you see with Selena, even with the rust. When Selena came in here and said <laughs> rust, I was like, yeah, see, I'm right. Uh-huh. We could, both, we could all be wrong. Yeah. Uh, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So this means that we can also ignore or forget information that challenges our beliefs, like you and Jonal telling us that, telling us that this is brown. Okay? Or we can recall events in ways that support our ideas, and we block memory. Right? So, pretty much, we're looking at facts and, and, opinion. and, and opinions. That's it. Right? So, facts like, and opinions. yeah. See, I mean, and I'm sure we can go through the tons and tons of like stories. There's right? Many. This is the big one, I think, for people the confirmation bias. Because yeah. We all do it. We all want to be confirmed in what we're saying and what our beliefs are. So, this one's a big one. Mm-hmm. So, no matter how trustworthy the source is, please check all of your sources. It doesn't matter. Mm. This could be your best friend who says, Guy, like, I'm telling you. No. How many sources? Who taught me that if you state something, you should be able to back it up with at least three sources? Yeah, Dr. Ben said he have at least four. Okay. Yeah. I was missing one. <laughs> have at least right? four sources. Mm-hmm. Don't just go. Not a lot of people don't do this. No, because, I mean, even some of the scholars nowadays, they'll take one source, right? And then they'll run with That's it. One perspective. Yeah. You don't know about the other perspective. You've got to be able to open yourself to everything. A true intellect will open themselves to all perspectives mm-hmm. regardless if it goes against what they believe or not because it's perspective right okay there's the halos and horns so we're going to show a clip but before we get there i'm going to explain it a little bit so this refers to the habit of taking one positive or negative trait in a person or thing mm. and using this to make positive or negative judgments so a quick example would be subways and mcdonald's so, what's the first thing you think of when, when you think of Subway? Healthy. Oh, oh, when you think of McDonald's? Unhealthy. Do you know that some of the items on their menus, if you look at them, they have the exact same calories, exact same fat, the exact same in almost everything? Yes. But right away, because we know Subway is this guy lost all type of weed. Yeah. So, oh. we think it's healthy. Right. But it's some of the same garbage that they sell at, at, at McDonald's. Yeah. It's the same. Let's play a short clip on halos and horns. Give you guys a little bit more on how this looks. This is another Have you ever wondered why attractive people who look happy appear so frequently in commercials? Well, back in 1920, psychologist Edward Thorndike coined a term for it, the halo effect. He noticed that if people have certain traits that we rate highly, such as attractiveness, we tend to perceive them as also being competent, successful, and so on. In other words, the halo effect is a judgment error or a cognitive bias which revolves around us starting with accurate information, for example noticing that someone is attractive, and based on that information we wrongfully assume other positive things are also true, despite not having evidence to that effect. However, things can get tricky. For example, Marshall Dermer and Beryl L. Thiel noticed back in 1975 that being attractive can backfire on you because jealousy can make those less attractive than you rate you lower than you deserve. You can think of this as the reverse halo effect. Finally, we also have the so-called horn effect and the name speaks for itself in that you notice or know something negative about someone and find it very difficult to appreciate or quantify the good things that person does. For example, knowing that someone used to be a criminal and finding it difficult to believe he or she changed, even if that is the case. So that's just a little bit more on what the halo and horns. horns kind of look like. Mm. That was a little bit more helpful. Right? We're going to move on to the next one in the, in the mm-hmm. Um Framing bias, and we were just talking about that. Yeah. Screen. So different frames can change the way a picture looks without changing the picture itself, which is so true. Okay. So we can frame information too. Journalists often report the same facts, but they frame it differently. And they can use different words. Words are a great way to frame. Of course. Anything. Of course. So in, a, in, in an article about the exact same thing, someone can use the word 
tragedy and act of terror and stimulate two different types of emotions. Yeah. When you hear the word tragedy, what do you think? Something very terrible happened. Sad, right? Yeah. Like you feel like a sadness. Yeah. Acts of terror. What, is, what, does, what does that bring out in you? Anger. Anger. Right? You see, and it's the ex- it could be the exact same event. Right. But using two different words puts another, a different frame on right. it. Right, right. Right? So things to be, con- to be considered. Favoritism. So this is a big one for everybody. Prejudice and favoritism. This is one of the most simplest forms of bias. To be prejudiced is to have positive or negative feelings towards a person based on that person's membership in a group. Oh, <laughs> Lord. This is like... What we've been going through. Right? Exactly what we've been going through. Right? The big, but even for us. Yeah? Like, sometimes I think black people don't think they can be prejudiced. Hmm. <laughs> we prefer sometimes things that are just us. Hmm. There's a group called Just Us. Yeah, I that's, can understand. That's favoritism and prejudice. Yeah. Can't deny it. Of course. Why yeah. not? All black. Yeah. When you go to the all white party. You can't wear nothing else but the white shirt and white pants and, never, white, and white socks. I never listen to that shit. <laughs> never invite me to an all anything. <laughs> but still. I'll just be like, hmm, I'm right? wearing rust. Everybody has it. <laughs> Everybody simply has their prejudice. Right? Very, very Right? True. We can't deny that. So we're, and we're, gonna, we're about to slide into our last segment. And as we go there, I definitely want to hear your views and your thoughts. What are your prejudice, guys? Do you, now that we've gone through all of them, what do you guys think you guys hold or what's your prejudice? Or not prejudice. What are your biases? Anchoring, af- attribution, mm-hmm. confirmation, halo, framing, porn, framing, mm-hmm. and favorites. Mm. Let's let us know. We'll be back with our last segment on here to help you. Are you retiring smart? Make your home's equity work for you. With your home's equity and our 30 years of experience, the Retire Smart Properties team can help you achieve the quality of life you've always wanted. Our services are 360 degrees. We'll give you advice, take care of staging and selling, and help you find the perfect home and community to transition to. It's time to enjoy the retirement lifestyle you deserve. Visit our website today to learn how you can use your home to retire comfortably. The Retire Smart Properties Team, powered by Remax West. At Benjamin Law, we understand the real cost of personal injuries. As the victim of an accident, you may be the one who's physically hurt, but your main concern is that your family are the ones who will pay the price. Benjamin Law will be there for you, helping, supporting, and working tirelessly to resolve your personal injury case. Call 1-855-899-4878 or visit benjaminlaw.ca and let our family of lawyers help your family. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back. I've had fun today. Did you have fun with the show today? I did. I learned a few things. Right? Yeah. I didn't know that um, you can actually have specific types of bias, right? I mean, <clears throat> by, to me, bias is bias, right? Mm-hmm. You either lean to one side or you don't. It's slant. There you go, right? <laughs> don't fall off the page, please. <laughs> the word bias means slant. Yeah, angled, right? So, mm. that's really cool. You guys definitely go and check back the last year. Um, to see what we were talking about. So in this last segment, we're going to kind of tie everything to a nice little bow. So one way to work on correcting your bias is to contextualize the context. Sorry, contextualize the context. Why are you laughing? In your media environment. Too much con. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, contextualize content. Dave's dying up here. He doesn't know what to do with himself. I know. It's nearly over. Don't worry. This means to think about things in relation to their sources and in relation to the circumstances and factors around them. Be very aware of the stuff that you're taking in, Mm -hmm. right? One way you can do this is to zoom out. So zooming out means to consider the source, Mm. switch focus from the individual story, and look at the bigger picture or the source that produced the story. Mm -hmm. So actually go to the source instead of just taking, again, what CNN said and going with it or what you saw on Twitter. Right. Ask critical questions. This is the one problem I think we have is we don't ask 
hypocritical. When we were younger, I think it's something that we lose, and I think as adults you do it. Pitney love to ask why. <laughs> Everything is, well, why? Why? Stop asking me why. And then we stop, but we shouldn't. Right. We should always ask, well, this don't make no sense. Well, why, am I, why am I doing this? No, that's perfect. Perfect right? analogy. I'm telling you, I don't, I'm not ever telling a child not to ask me something. Like, they, get, they get annoying sometimes with it, yeah. They do, because I have to ask my wife for everything. But don't, I guess don't subdue that. That's what I'm trying to say. Right. It's very important to be critical. Next, we have to learn how to neutralize biases and to share your analysis. So hmm. the brain is going to learn how to raise these red flags at suspicious images, clips, headlines, quotes, and other content. So things to think about and how you can actually put this into action now that we've gone through biases and that you're going to be watching the show. So from today on, what can you do to help with this? So think about using all your senses. What are you hearing? Hmm. What are you seeing? Who's writing? Who's paying? Very important. Mm -hmm. Okay. What is missing? Who benefits from all this that's being pushed at you? And who is the intended audience? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. We are going to actually end this um, with a. I thought it was cool when I saw it. They did like a. I, I don't want to say too much. I just want you guys to see it. But they do this activity, and who's, it actually who's they? looks. So you're going to see. Okay. It's a school. It happens at a school. I see. And they do this on Ontario this activity about breaking bias. So I think it like it was a really good way to end all of this. But mm. before we go there, because after that, I can say goodbye to everybody. What did you want to share? No, actually, you know what? You hit the nail on the head, um, especially when it comes to checking out the source. Right? Um, it's important. We've just read one statement in regards to Arnold Toynbee. We've seen countless of other uh, segments or, or spoofs. You know, I guess like the news outlets, you know, and then of course. If someone tells you there's going to be a, there, like, uh, if there's, there's flooding, just watch and see if anyone walks by. Exactly, right? But at the end of the day, I mean, we have we got a responsibility to make sure that um, we sift through the, all the bullshit, right, and see exactly what's there. It's the news. It's more than anyone else. So one of the things um, we can almost do is look at your brain like a garden. Hmm. And anyone who grows vegetables or... Mm -hmm. will know that if you put like negative things in your garden, nothing's going to grow. You're not going to produce anything. Mm -hmm. You've got to put positive in your garden. Very, very important. Filter out what doesn't need to be there. There you go. So we're going to end with this segment, but I want to say thank you to everybody. Definitely, I'm going to encourage you to that comment box below. Comment in there with your thoughts, um, biases that you may have, other biases I may not have mentioned that you may know about, or if you want to add to them. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button red button below to find out about all of the shows here on the network. And of course, come back for us. Do it again? There you go. All right. We'll see you next week, guys. Stay out of the cold. Stay warm. And we'll see you next week on Here to Help. Peace and love, family. We're going to place a sticker on your forehead. <laughs> In complete silence, stand up and group yourself. Okay, are we grouped? Yeah, for the most part? All right, what just happened? There's two people below that is not in our group. So there's two people that you've identified that not in our group. For the folks who are in green or in orange, um, how did it feel to do this? I felt sort of like I had no control over it, yeah. Yeah, so you felt like you had no control over it, yeah. I personally think it was more comfortable to be in a big group than to be oh, like yeah. in a group alone. For my two folks in the back, how did it feel for you to do this? It was weird, I was like, I don't know what part I was, like which uh, group I was with. I guess it was okay. So did anyone attempt or try to bring them into their group? I thought about it. You thought about it? Well, I sent him I away. She did! <laughs> I didn't do that! I wanted him to be here. I don't like people being alone. It's interesting, right, because I never asked anybody to group themselves by color. I just said to group yourselves, right? The group decided, all of you decided to do this. I never said by color. How can you kind of like avoid this happening at your school? Yeah, you could try to make friends with that person or 
walk with that person so they don't feel so alone. An invitation is a powerful thing. So even if you invite someone and they're not ready, continuously just being consistent with someone could ultimately result in them saying, yeah, sure, I, I will join you. We're gonna do this again, right? So, group yourself. In silence. In silence. Just group yourself. <laughs> All right, are we grouped? Yes. Yeah. All right, awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah.